بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته brothers and sisters and uh, I welcome you again in another uh, episode in the series uh, of explaining the hadith of Jibril عليه السلام Today we will resume explaining some of the terms that were mentioned in the hadith The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم answered the question about the hour by Jibreel. He said the one who's being asked about it has no more knowledge about it than the one who's asking the questions, the, the question. Now, the Prophet وسلم, by saying this is teaching us that if you don't know the answer to something and you're asked about it, say, I don't know. It's not a shame not to know everything because no one knows everything. As a matter of fact, Imam Malik was in a gathering and a man walked in and he said, I had traveled such and such number of days, I think it was 30 or 40 days from my people to come and ask you the following questions. He said, ask. And then he asked him a number of questions to everyone. Malik said, I don't know. I have no answer. So at the end, the man said, what do you want me to go back and say to my people? I've traveled all of this distance one way and then going back the same time or number of days and then I go and tell them what? He said, go back and tell them Malik doesn't know. So uh, it's not uh, demeaning. Uh, does not, it's not degrading to the person to say I don't know or not to know everything. Yes, no one knows everything. So the Prophet ﷺ is teaching us here to say, I don't know when we don't know. Or something similar to the, the, to the answer, reflecting your lack of knowledge, so you don't speak about something that you do not know. Right. The following term is his saying ﷺ when he was talking about the signs of the hour, when he said, so tell me about some of the signs. He said, it is when the female slave gives birth to her mistress. There are different opinions of the scholars explaining what this term means. One of them is the spread of unkindness, unkindness and undutifulness to parents. And when you look around you and you see how undutiful some of the children are to their parents and how spread this phenomenon is, you realize what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said 1400 years ago. I am exposed to some stories, the daughter or the son for that matter, treat their parents or one of them as if they are their master and they own them. Some cases, it's not just being impolite and undutiful, it reaches to the level of actually beating the parents. And this is, this is outrageous. The uh, saying of the Prophet وسلم, this is Jibreel, he came to teach you your religion. Now the one who taught the religion was who? Who was the one answering the questions all the time? It was the Prophet ﷺ. But the one who caused this to happen was Jibreel. And that's why the Prophet ﷺ attributed the teaching to Jibreel. He didn't say, I taught you religion by answering him. He said, Jibreel came to teach you your religion by means of him asking the question. So he attributed the teaching to him. Alayhi salatu wasalam. One narration in, in the book of Imam Muslim explains this. Abu Huraira said, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would tell the companions to ask him, he would say, ask me. But the companions would be very reluctant. They, they held the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam at a very high esteem to the point that out of respect, they, they, they would not ask him too many questions. And then Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam came and asked this uh, series of questions and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam responded to them to teach them the religion. And that's why at the end of this version of the narration, 
He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, this was Jibreel who came to teach you since you refrained from asking. And this is the clarification of why Jibreel alayhi salam came. The scholars, may Allah have mercy on them, said there are two things that will prevent the person from ever learning anything. Being shy. Shying away and not asking questions. And being too proud to ask questions. Oh, I am so and so. How can I ask questions? How can I show that I don't know? Well, yeah, you certainly don't know everything. So you certainly will have to come to a point to ask questions in, in order to learn. If this is regarding worldly matters, it is more so deserving when it comes to, you, to the matter of your faith. The Prophet ﷺ showed us uh, an etiquette in teaching with students and those who don't know. He first asked them question, the question uh, before he informed them the answer. And uh, this is a good technique. It, it uh, motivates the brain to work when you ask the question. Before giving the answer, you make the person in front of you think. He might come to a right con conclusion, he might not. But this is a good way, a good technique in teaching. Asking the question, and this is why he asked them, do you know who this was? He, they said no, and then he informed them uh, about him being Jibreel. And another reason, the scholar said, when you're asking the person the question, and he starts thinking about the answer, before you give him the answer, it makes the piece of information you're going to tell him as an answer after that, stick more in his memory than when you would have just simply uh, spelt it out in the beginning. In some of the narrations, the Prophet وسلم, was asked first, ab first about Islam, like the one we mentioned in, last, in the last session, and then about Iman. In, another, uh, in other narrations, he وسلم, was asked about Iman first and then about Islam. So the sequence uh, of the questions varied. And this depends on the memory of the companion and when he remembered and narrated the uh, story. Uh, Shaykh al Munajjid, may Allah preserve him, said uh, the variation of the sequence is due to the narrators, may Allah be pleased with them, the companions, uh, based on what they remembered. One uh, mentioned Islam first and one mentioned the Iman first. But he said uh, the sand opinion is that he was, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, was asked about Iman before he was asked about uh, Islam. Now, some, some scholars explained why this is the case. They said that faith is the, base, the foundation uh, of entering into the religion. So you have to know how to enter into the religion and what the articles of your faith, what do you should believe in this, in this religion, before you go actually and ask about or learn about the practical aspect uh, of this religion. So the Prophet ﷺ was asked about the uh, foundation of the religion, the faith, and then was asked about the practical aspects of that, and then was asked about Ihsan, which is how to perform it in a perfect uh, manner that pleases Allah Azza wa Jal. Now, a question here was posed by some of the scholars. These uh, different narrations, or the variation of the narrations, or different versions of the same story, does that mean that this incident happened more than once? Could this be the case? Uh, Ibn Hajar, may Allah have mercy on him, said there is no doubt that this story only took place one time. But it is because of the narrators, the companions who uh, narrated the story, conveyed the story, and they have changed the sequence based on what they remembered, as we mentioned earlier. 
So let's talk based on the opinion that faith was asked about, Iman was asked about first. And let's start with defining what Iman is. Uh, Iman, faith, is something that is internal, in the heart. It is uh, the belief of a person about something in a very firm and confirmed manner, uh, which he has no doubt about, and there is no possibility in that thing that he believes in being wrong or has uh, mistakes or errors about it. So he clearly and firmly believes in that faith, and this entails that whatever is legislated, now we're talking about Islam, so let's switch to talking about it. This was a general definition of faith in general. In, in Islam, it is to firmly believe in the articles of faith uh, without a share of, of, of doubt. And this firm belief entails that one accepts the legislation from Allah Azza wa Jal and fully submits to the commands and legislations of Allah. Now, what do we have as evidence proving these articles of faith, the pillars of, of Iman? In another narration, the Prophet وسلم, was asked about Iman. He said it is uh, to believe in Allah, His angels, His books, His messengers, and, the, here, uh, and the, the, the last day, and to believe in predestiny, in Qadr, decree, uh, good and evil. Uh, now, no one will be a believer without believing in every single article or pillar of faith. One must believe in all of them before he is called a believer. Allah Azza wa also mentioned these uh, articles of faith in his book. When he said, وَلَكِنَّ الْبِرَّ مَنْ آمَنَ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ وَالْمَلَائِكَةِ وَالْكِتَابِ وَالنَّبِيِّينَ Bir is to believe in Allah, the, the hereafter or the last day, the angels, the books, and the prophets. Now these are five out of six. What about Qadr? He said, subhanahu wa ta'ala, إِنَّا كُلَّ شَيْءٍ خَلَقْنَاهُ بِقَدَرِ Indeed, everything was created based on uh, a decree. Now, Faith is of three different categories. Belief in the heart, which is to firmly believe in the heart, uh, and whatever implications of this belief in the heart from the deeds that are done by the heart, just like, and there are, there are a lot of that. Uh, loving Allah Azza wa Jal, fearing Allah Azza wa Jal, relying on Allah, on Allah Azza wa Jal, submitting to Allah Azza wa Jal, being contempt with Allah Azza wa Jal, being shy from Allah Azza wa Jal. And all of these deeds of the heart reflect on the body and has a great impact on it. So the lack of that will be reflected on the lack of practical faith on the person. Uh, the second category is to believe in the by the tongue, which is the utterance of the two testimonies of faith. And finally, the, the, the limbs and the body. Every physical aspect in Islam or, or uh, act in Islam is included in this third category. Now, let's address the point of differentiating between Iman and Islam. Uh, the scholars said, when Islam and Iman are both mentioned in the same place, in the same text, then Islam is talking about the physical aspect uh, and Iman is explained by or is talking about the deeds of the heart. But when each one of them is mentioned alone, the word Iman comes alone in a text and the word Islam comes uh, in a text, then they're both, the, each of them includes both in that. Uh, when Allah says, وَرَضِيتُ لَكُمُ الْإِسْلَامَ دِينَ And I have accepted for you Islam as a religion. Islam here, in this, in this verse, uh, includes both the pillars of Islam and the 
articles of faith or pillars of faith. When Allah says, وَأَنَّ اللَّهَ مَعَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ And Allah is with the believers or those who have iman. Again, this includes uh, both Islam and uh, iman. You see, because Islam and uh, iman have a, a, an interrelated relationship. In the book of Imam Muslim, uh, uh, as narrated by Abu Hurairah, anhu, the Prophet وسلم, said, and listen attentively to this narration. He said, Iman is 70 some uh, parts. In another narration, he said, 60 some levels. The best of which is the utterance of La ilaha illallah. And the lowest of which is to remove harm, harmful uh, objects from the way of pedestrians, that is. And bashfulness is one of the levers, levels uh, of Iman. Now, the Prophet ﷺ mentioned three things. Haya, bashfulness, is a deed of the heart. Utterance of La ilaha illallah is the deed of the tongue. And removing harmful uh, objects from the way is the deed of the body, which included all aspects. Again, so the interconnected uh, relationship between Iman and Islam is very obvious in this hadith. And it explains why when we say, when each one is mentioned alone, it, it reflects or means both. Very important point about Iman in the belief of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah is that it increases and decreases. Some deviant sects don't believe that. We believe that it increases by virtue of performing good deeds and it decreases as a result of sinning. Uh, Allah Azza wa Jal proves this in the Quran. It, he proves that Iman increases. Allah Azza wa Jal says, إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ الَّذِينَ إِذَا ذُكِرَ اللَّهُ وَجِلَتْ قُلُوبُهُمْ وَإِذَا تُلِيَتْ عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتُهُ زَادَتْهُمْ إِيمَانًا Indeed, true believers are those when, uh, whom when Allah Azza wa Jal is mentioned, their hearts shiver of fear. And when his verses are recited before them, their faith, their iman increases. So people vary in the level of faith because they vary in the uh, number of good deeds uh, and actions they perform. Some people recite more Qur'an than others. Some people fast more than others. Some people perform jihad and others don't. Some people mention Allah. Some people uh, are keen on removing harmful objects from the way of, of people. So on and so on. Some people are kinder to their parents than others. Some people are kinder to their uh, neighbors. Some people are not kind to their parents or to people in general. And so on and so forth. And that's why people vary. Uh, in, in the level of their faith. Finally, uh, let's talk about how Iman is one piece. These belief in, in, in these articles is, is a package. You can't do with one without the others. The Prophet ﷺ mentioned all the pillars or articles of faith. And that's why the scholar said, one's faith is not uh, sound. If he misses out in any of these articles or uh, uh, pillars. For example, one cannot say, oh, I believe in Allah, but I don't believe in, in his messenger. I believe in everything except for Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And you find this when you debate with some of the Christians. They're willing to believe in Allah and they deny Trinity, for example, and they believe in the hereafter, blah, blah, blah. But when it comes to Muhammad, they, some of them refuse. And we say, 
until that is completed, then there is no such thing as being a believer. You're not counted as a believer until you believe in the entire package, the entire set of these six pillars of faith. We will stop at this, inshallah, and we will resume in the following session. Bi-ithnillah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.